Happy Smelloween, boys and kids. Yes, that is right. For once, Uncle Cosmonaut is doing a Halloween episode. And yeah, I could watch an actual good horror movie and do a cute little retrospective, but what kind of internet nitpicker would I be if I did that? No siree. Instead, I went on IMDb and I looked for the lowest rated horror movie I could find. And that's when I found... Axum. Axum is probably the worst movie that I've ever seen in my entire life. But it's not even easy for me to say that because I can't even consider it a movie. I'm not even showing clips of it right now because in order to really understand the movie, you need to just see it as it happens. In order to give you a taste of what Axum truly is, I'm just going to show you this clip without any context. Yeah, hold on to your butts, because this is gonna be wild. So the first thing we see is text explaining the backstory of the movie. You'll notice that this text goes by really fucking fast too, so we'll pause to get the full story. Now the first thing to note is that the formatting is way off, and the first word in each line is capitalized no matter what. On a cold winter night in 1990, Mr. Mason, a mean and cruel, Town's man left his job for home. After arriving home, he took a shotgun and killed his wife and kids. Then his mean man killed himself. <laughs> Legend has it, he will return in 13 years to revenge his family deaths. <laughs> So, in case you were wondering, yes, this is the movie. Not only does it look like shit, you can't hear anything the characters are saying. And yes, these are the main characters. The extras are talking at the same volume, so we can't actually hear anything. And you might think, okay, well this is just in the opening scene, they just don't have a microphone. No. That's what happens in every scene. It's just people talking over each other with no microphones. When I started watching this movie, I thought, oh God, I can't do a review of this. No one's gonna even be able to tell what's going on, but I can't help it. The movie is truly special. So I'm gonna explain the plot now because it took me three viewings to understand what the fuck is actually happening. So these guys here, who don't really have names, all decide to go to a cabin owned by one of these characters' grandfather for a weekend getaway. It's a typical horror movie premise, pretty easy to understand. Now while I watch this movie three times, I still don't know anybody's name because the movie is just too incomprehensible. Oh, also, most of the time, scenes will just end in the middle of a sentence. The movie's not even interested in what anybody has to say. Sometimes when a scene begins, the audio won't start until a few seconds into the scene. And these small technical issues aren't even the only thing wrong with this movie. This is just the beginning. This is just the blanket of shittiness that is cast over the entire film. So anyway, after we meet our heroes, we see our first scary, horrifying scene. We see an unknown assailant enter the house of an old man. The old guy goes to the front door to see what the commotion is, and then he decides to go get his gun. The best part of it is that when he walks away from the door, we see the villain of the film, who I'm going to call Axum, and he's basically about to kill him right there. But then when the old guy walks into the next room, he has a good 30 seconds to fuck around before he dies. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck? So the next scene, for some reason, is a dance party and yo mama joke competition. Your mother's so fat, her shadow weighs 40 pounds. Your mama's so dumb, she studied all night for a blood test. You know, that's a lot of stuff to manage at once, but it's a good thing we have the most prestigious DJ. I'm gonna let this guy introduce him because I couldn't do it myself. Featuring DJ Double Cut Master, slice him up, dice him up. OG, my man, so nice, J nice, and dumb. So this movie is made by Michael Mafume Mafume. Now that's just your name again. You don't have to put that in quotes if that's your nickname. That's like if I called myself Marcus, Marcus Turner, Turner. 
Also, you gotta love that title drop. That really adds to the atmosphere of this spooky movie. I'm gonna have to sleep with the lights on after that one. So yeah, uh, this scene is like five fucking minutes long and it has nothing to do with this story. I have no idea why the movie begins like this. Please, sir, may I may I have some movie? I'd also like to mention that this is the only time anyone in the movie uses a mic. And it's not even hooked up to the camera, so it sounds worse somehow. I love Morgan State Big Bass! Let me in, it, <laughs> So after that, we finally get a scene with all of our main characters, I think. I don't know any of their names because even if they did say them, I wouldn't be able to hear anything. And then in the scene after that, the music is louder than the characters. Also, I love how they drive in and park in the middle of nowhere, and then this guy comes to meet them from out of the middle of the woods. What were you what were you doing back there? Now after that, we get introduced to some new characters, and they are officially called Hobo 1 and Hobo 2 on IMDb. They are only in this scene to tell us that the Axum guy is somewhere around here lurking around doing bad stuff, and then they leave the movie forever. Cut. You heard that correctly. I shit you not, they accidentally left in the director saying cut. Honestly, the scariest thing in this movie is that you never know if the next scene is going to have bad video, bad audio, or both. I'm serious too, there's only like two or three scenes where you can kind of tell what's going on. And this is the best quality version of the movie that I could find. It just looks like this. In this scene, these two characters are talking while walking around in the forest, and then this lady comes in and she kind of interrupts what they're talking about, and then she pulls the lady a few feet ahead and they just chat about something that doesn't matter, while this guy goes around and kicks dirt in the background. After that, we have our first of many dinner scenes, and it's also at this point where you might notice that they only have one camera. So that means there are no cuts. Yes, that's right. Every scene is just one take. Normally, this is a pretty impressive feat, but since this movie is just 10 people yelling at each other, it's a fucking mess. I got the music! Anyway, now it's time for the snuff film segment. In this part of the movie, I can only assume we're looking at a flashback because it's in black and white and I'm just kind of filling in the blanks here. Okay, to be honest, this is the scariest shit that I've ever seen in my life. I will give this movie credit. This scene is actually horrifying. It's shot so badly that it's actually unintentionally unsettling. Oh, and it's also impossible to tell what's happening because there's no dialogue. Seriously, look at this scene and tell me what's happening because I've watched this a few times now and I have no idea what I'm looking at. So the next scene is really interesting to me because for the first time in the whole movie, we have people who are actually acting. We are out of gas! They aren't doing a very good job, but they are actually trying. And the scene is hilarious to me because these guys are fucking pissed. And it's not for any reason either. Let's just go find somebody's house so we can make a phone call, okay? Sarah, if you stay here, we will be right back. Breakfast, you come with me. Wait, what was his name? Was his name Breakfast? We've only heard two names in the whole movie. DJ fucking slice him up, dice him up, and breakfast. So anyway, these guys are having car trouble, so they decide to go ahead and find help, even though their destination is the other way. Meanwhile, our main characters wake up after their long night of partying, and then they have another incoherent conversation. Look, I'm gonna go back to sleep. I'll holler at you later. You just woke up, though. Why'd everybody go back to bed? Anyway, then our new characters decide to walk into a random abandoned house. This is just regular horror movie stuff, and at this point, I'm glad to see it. I also got really excited because you can kind of see things clearly in this shot, but then when they get into the house, you have no idea what the fuck you're looking at anymore. Anyway, the white guy wanders around the house alone for a while before he gets killed by Axum. Except not with an axe, with a phone. Then in a truly moving performance, we see Breakfast as he has an intense internal debate 
on if it was right to abandon his friend. Shit, homie, don't play that goddamn shit. Man, that is my boy. Man, fuck it, I'm going to the fuck. But you won't catch my black ass. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> now, here's the thing. Breakfast doesn't even know that his friend is dead. He just didn't want to go in the house because it creeped him out. But instead, he decides to run away. As far as he's concerned, there's no threat. Anyway, the next few scenes are just more of the same shit we've already seen, so there's no point in really talking about them. We're just gonna get straight to the action, baby. So we fast forward to nighttime, where Pootie Tang and this girl go into the woods to make out when they are attacked from off screen. This movie pads out its very short one hour and 10 minute time frame with stupid shit like this scene, but we don't actually see these characters get attacked. And then the body of the white guy who got killed with the phone somehow comes in through the door, even though he died in a completely different house. Anyway, the logical conclusion is obviously for everybody to just run out through the door that the dead body just came through. So after they run outside, they see Axum, I think. And he's, he's working on a car, or he's hiding. Yeah, they just used two takes of the exact same reaction. This movie literally does everything wrong. Anyway, now we are at the point where the movie decides to be really, really dumb. That's saying a lot. There are like 10 characters in this movie, which I'm just guessing because I actually don't know how many characters there are, but there's a lot. And they all decide to run in opposite directions. <laughs> now normally, this would be a really bad idea from a writing perspective and from a storytelling perspective, right? Why would any sane character do this? I don't know. Wouldn't this mean that Axum can't kill them all at once? It might take a little longer to get these characters dead? Well, no, because Axum can teleport in this movie. One second, he's out in the woods, and then in the very next scene, he's in the house. And then in the scene after that, he's in the other house, which is on the other side of the woods. The editing is on another fucking level. I should also mention that he doesn't even use an axe. He uses a telephone, a machete, a baseball bat, a fucking gun. He uses literally everything but an axe. Oh, and uh, now I'm gonna show you guys my favorite scene in the entire movie. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen someone trip without moving. <laughs> She's going like 0 .005 miles per hour and she keeps slipping on nothing. Oh, and by the way, after that, she just leaves the movie. She doesn't die. She just runs away and is never seen again. Honestly, I don't even have to talk about this movie. I think it speaks for itself. I could just show you guys clips without saying anything, and my job would be done here. Here are the nominees for performance by an actor in a leading role. Well, listen, it's... You just gotta understand. I ain't never been in no situation like this before. I ain't never been out in no woods with no man chasing me. No, I, I don't believe. I can't believe this stuff. He's gonna kill us. We just gonna die. Everybody gonna get us. We gonna. I don't believe. So now this guy is back outside the house for some reason, even though they all ran away from the house, and he's doing this. There's the cameraman, by the way. He decides to go back in the house, and he's holding an invisible gun. Okay. Once he goes back in the house, he finds the old man who died at the beginning of the film, who's apparently his grandfather? And this raises a lot of questions. More questions than I was willing to put up with. He was just dead in the closet, and out of 10 people, nobody found him. And how come you didn't try to look for your grandpa when you got to the house? Now, hey, maybe these things were mentioned at some point in the movie, but it's not like I could fucking hear them. So after running around like morons for about like a half hour, the surviving characters end up finding each other in the woods again. Even though they were all running in opposite directions, somehow they just ended up back with each other. I could go bit by bit and point out every single dumb thing that happens in this movie, but honestly, I just want to save some of the magic for you guys because this movie is fucking hilarious. 
However, the movie is also only an hour and ten minutes long, so after some more goofy-ass moments, we quickly arrive at the end of the film. So everything in the movie builds up to this moment. Our heroes finally decide to make a last stand and confront Axum. And what do they do? They stab him, and then they, they kick him a couple times. Yeah, that's how they beat him. I don't know what you expected, to be honest. Also, the movie is dedicated to his dead grandmother. Except this movie came out in the beginning of 1992, which means it was probably made in 1991, which means either way he got his grandma's date of death wrong. Thank you, God, for helping me create Axum. So yeah, if you can even call this a movie, it's easily the worst movie I've ever seen. You can't understand the dialogue, you can't see what's happening, the story is non-existent, you don't know any of the characters' names or motivations, everything just happens for the fuck of it. This movie is a complete and utter failure, and for that, I'm gonna have to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Happy Halloween. Same stick of boys out that old dirty crew, bunny give them the blues, I want his juice. Uh,